happy Monday. Thanks for joining me tonight for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And it's a time that we can relax to and craft together. Uh, so, all right, tonight I'm very excited because we are starting our ABC Stitch Along. So we are starting with letter A, <laughs> Mr. Alligator and his albatross friends here. Uh, so we're going to go in order uh, this year, A through Z, working on these embroideries. We're going to do one a week for the first two weeks of the month. Then we'll work on some other projects and uh, then we will um, pick it up again uh, next month. So this week is the alligator. Uh, next week will be the butterfly, B for butterfly. And uh, that will be our sort of schedule. So I am going to be doing this, the quilt as you go method to turn it into a quilt. So uh, uh, the days that we, the weeks that we get done a little bit early, uh, we'll be working on um, the quilt a little bit as well. And we'll be talking about that as we go along here too. So thanks again for joining me. Welcome. Uh, tonight we will be transferring the alligator pattern to our fabric. So I'll show you how to do an iron-on transfer and I'll also show you how you can trace it to these patterns come with a traceable uh, pattern and an iron-on pattern. So all right, let's go everyone. All right, I am excited to be here tonight. So here is the whole alphabet we'll be working through, <laughs> all these little fellers. Um, so uh, the bundle came with everything that you needed to get started. Uh, you're more than welcome to use your own, your own supplies though, for sure. Uh, so I do have my hoop here. I'm gonna need that tonight. I am gonna use the floss from uh, so it comes with a set of our floss. I don't think this is going to make it through the whole alphabet. So I'm going to stitch with you guys with uh, the floss pack and then we can see how much we can, we can get through with that. So um, that'll be kind of fun. And uh, yeah, I got a scissors here and needles. Uh, we'll get the scissors out and use it tonight. I think I, I have a needle already that I'll use. Our little stitch instructions, uh, those will be nearby. And I got my fabric, so let's let's uh, grab a piece from that. So with the bundle, it comes with uh, 30 pieces of fabric. You really only need 26, right? Um, but I am going to be making a quilt with 26 squares plus four corners. So uh, uh, the extra ones, I could use this and maybe stitch something else on it, or I could just use another piece of fabric. And we'll get into that as we go. But I'm going to just get one of these out for tonight. And this is just a cotton muslin fabric. Uh, you can use a quilting fabric, whatever uh, works best for you. Okay, so um, let's transfer this design to the fabric. So for that, um, let's open up our pattern. So let me know if you're stitching this with me. I know a bunch of you uh, got the bundle. Oh, that's sweet. Justin says, favorite part of my bundle has to be the hand-signed well wishes from Alyssa for happy crafting. Thanks. Oh, I appreciate that. Yes, we are going to have some happy crafting here for sure. So this is what's in the pattern, and this is what will be in every one of the, the patterns. Uh, we have the, uh, the, you know, the front cover where we can see the stitches, and then there's also... Uh, on the inside, it has what stitches go where. And then this is also the color guide. So we'll use this uh, for our colors. Um, the colors aren't labeled. You can actually just color, use like whatever colors you like. I'm gonna be pulling from this set of 23. Uh, but I do think that this would be really fun to play with color. Like what if you had like a, a purple alligator? That'd be pretty fun, I think. Um, so anyway. We have a trace me pattern. So this is the pattern that you'll use if you want to trace the design to your fabric. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then it also comes with an iron on pattern. So this will be reversed. So you can see like the A is backwards here. Uh, this will actually be um, put on like this. So uh, with the back side up and then when we uh, 
so that's when we put it onto the fabric. You know, we're like flipping it uh, to put it on. So that's why it's in, in reverse. Um, we'll be doing it this way tonight, but I will just quickly touch on how to do it with the uh, traceable pattern too. And then we have some instructions on the back stitch and satin stitch. So I do, this, this also comes with uh, more detailed stitch instructions and we will definitely be going over all the stitches so these patterns are uh this is like almost vintage penguin and fish <laughs> so we've had these patterns for quite some time uh and we haven't ever made a quilt out of it oh yay Ro robin's making making it that's awesome so we, we just haven't ever stitched them all together, which is crazy. We've stitched a few of them here and there live, but we haven't done the whole thing. So I'm excited for that. But uh, these are older patterns, so uh, um, I don't have like all the text written in and then how to do each stitch in these. So that's why we're doing it all live as well. Um, again, there is that cheat sheet with, with the stitches uh, more in depth. And on Penguin and Fish, we have uh, in-depth stitch videos of every single one of the stitches in here. So if you're having any trouble with the stitches, let me know. We will go over them um, and ask as many times as you want. I will go over them with you as many times as you need. And uh, then uh, be sure to watch those videos over on Penguin and Fish. Um, we do have that free raccoon sampler uh, design as well, where you get the emails of all the stitches, how to do each of the stitches. So that might be something you might be interested in. So, all right, let's start out with this iron on pattern. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is, so it says iron me trim off text area before ironing. So that is really important um, because we don't want that to transfer to our design. <laughs> So we are going to cut that off. And that's why, you know, I have a couple extra pieces of fabric. And we do have extra fabric on the website, too, if you do accidentally um, get that on there. Because this is pretty permanent. It, it's sort of like a semi-permanent line. But um, it will end up probably being pretty dark um, and uh, not really washing off too much. It will fade a little bit, but not, not a ton. Oh, Cheryl's new here. Hello. Um, all right. So this is how uh, my favorite way of transferring a design. It's, it's super fast um, if you can get your hands on an iron-on on transfer. So here's my fabric that I'm using. I'm just using a 100% cotton fabric. And uh, this is my pressing mat here. You can use an ironing board. Uh, one thing I am going to do, though, is uh, put down a paper towel. If you have like a paper bag or something, that works as well, but uh, I'm using the paper towel um, here. And what that's gonna do is prevent uh, the design from pressing all the way through to your ironing board. So, you know, fabric has, it's like woven. So it actually is, has like a ton of little holes. The ink will actually go through those holes onto your ironing board if you don't protect your, your ironing board. So I have an ironing board that's all full of these, <laughs> these little animals. Um, all right. So uh, you may want to mark the center. I'm going to just eyeball this and get it right in the center of my fabric. So when I make this into a quilt, I'm going to actually cut this down ultimately to um, eight and a half inches. They start, this starts out at around 10 and a half inches. So if I'm a little off, like if I don't get it exactly in the center, we're going to have some leeway. So keep that in mind, at least if you're going to do a quilt like I am um, with the um, with the eight and a half inch squares. Oh, you signed up for the stitch guide. Awesome. Black hat sewing. I appreciate that. Yeah. So you'll get emails on how to do 14 different stitches. Um, all these stitches here with like video and everything, too. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that's helpful. And a couple more on top of that. So all right, I am all set up. Like I said, I'm going to eyeball it. You could, um, you could kind of uh, theoretically fold this in half both ways to kind of get a center to eyeball it. Like I might just finger press the edges. I am going to actually iron this before pressing it, though, so all these markings might go, to, go away. But it might help a little bit. Let's just, let's just put a little bit of a center. 
Oh, sewing is your jam, but I recently also got into embroidery. Ugh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we'll be sewing um, this too as we go. I'm going to do the quilt as you go method to turn this into a quilt, which means that we will individually uh, quilt um, each of these little pieces. So we'll have like a bunch of tiny quilts that we'll be putting together into a, oops, to, into a full quilt later. So, okay, you guys, let's uh, preheat our fabric here. Um, I'm gonna get you, all of y'all, a little higher up tonight. So hold on, bear with me for a sec. Okay, that's a little higher up, I suppose. <laughs> it's gradually falling, but all right. So I have my iron, um, it's on the cotton setting. And I'm just going to preheat the area that I'm pressing. Um, that's actually pretty important. You do want to preheat. Remember, I have the, the paper underneath. All right. And then I'm going to place this design. Again, sort of trying to eyeball it in the center. And uh, I think that looks pretty decent. Like I said, we have a little bit of a little bit of leeway on the sides here, so I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little higher. There. And now I'm going to just set the iron on it. I'm going to move a little bit, but I don't want to wiggle it too much. So for about five seconds, and you can peek. Oh, I need a little bit more down here. A little bit over here. And I think the nose needed a little bit more too. Oh, there we go. That's looking good though. I'm not gonna worry about up there. I think that's fine. Let's check the nose. Oh, we're great. So, zoop, there we are. Plenty, plenty good. All right, so that was easy enough. Um, you don't want to like wiggle your iron too much when you do that because you don't want to accidentally move the paper and and you don't want your lines to get like blurry and and shimmery. Um, it doesn't need steam. So great question, Gretchen. I am not using steam. Um, that's I don't think you. Yeah, you probably shouldn't use steam because it'll get the paper wet and stuff. I don't think it. I haven't actually tested that with using steam but I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world if you did either, but yes, no steam. So just a warm iron preheat, and then uh, um, uh, the preheating is, is a little important, otherwise you'll have to hold it longer. And you don't wanna rest your iron for ages either, because you don't wanna like burn the fabric or anything either. Um, so anyway, I think this is plenty good. I mean, it's a little lighter here and there, but I can 100% see everything really, really well. Uh, and you can actually use the um, transfer like up to five times. So, you know, this can be used for a quilt if you wanted to stitch this on to like, you know, I don't know, a little, you know, I think this would be cute like on a jean jacket for a little kid or something. You could use that to transfer it right to there. So that's the beauty of, a, of an iron on transfer is you can use it a couple times and uh, um, it's, you can use it on different, uh, different materials like we're using it here and you could do it on like a, a, a jean or, or something like that. Okay, so just to go over it, I do wanna go uh, show you how I like um, doing the traceable design. So you can actually use this, uh, so this is, the, this is the correct direction, right? So this isn't flipped, like it isn't reversed like how the iron on is. So with the, with this one you could actually um, use a, a water soluble stabilizer or you could just trace it. So let me show you um, this stabilizer quick. So uh, uh, if you wanted to stitch stitch onto like a dark color because for if you're if you're using an iron-on and you do this on like a black fabric, you're not gonna be able to see these lines, right? Because it's black ink. Um, so if you wanted to go on a dark fabric or like something hard to trace through, like a felt or something like that, or flannel, that would be hard to trace through. Uh, using something like a, um, a, you know, a wash away stabilizer might be a good idea. So what this is, 
is you can run this through a photocopier or a printer, or you can actually trace your design right to it so you can see the alligator through, through the pattern here. I'm gonna get you guys get a little bit lower, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. Um, but there you can see the design through that, so you could actually trace to this, and then this just comes off like a sticker, so this side is sticky, and then you stitch right through it. You stick it to your fabric, and then you stitch right through this, and it comes off with water later. So this is a great option if you wanted to stitch on um, like a dark fabric, or like a really heavily detailed patterned fabric, or like a, a thick fabric or fuzzy fabric like felt or, or um, flannel or fleece. And then uh, to trace it is another method. And for that, I just like sticking it right underneath the fabric. And with this fabric, you can see it well enough through. Otherwise, you can grab like a little light table. So um, this will just help to see through um, the fabric even more. You can also tape it to a bright window. That is a classic, simple way to see through uh, to the design. So you tape the design to the window first, and then you tape your fabric on top. I'm just gonna draw in this little corner. And uh, I, my favorite tool for tracing is literally just a you know Bic uh, mechanical pencil. I think it gives a nice clean line and it'll rub off a little as you stitch, but it should easily stay on for the entire time that you're, you're stitching. And it gives just like that nice thin line. And then you just take your time and uh, trace it on there. So here you go. Uh, so favorite mechanical pencil. Uh, you can also use a water soluble ink uh, marker. So this is the one that I have. It's that, that fine line marker. So this will come off in water when you're done. But same thing. You just go ahead and trace over the whole design. Uh, with this, you don't want to hold it down on the on the fabric for too long because it'll like get big and bleed. But you know that'll all go away in water too. Anyway, just quickly going through this, um, maybe for the the butterfly next week we could trace the whole thing just so I can show you guys one that's been fully traced. But there we go. That's what the water soluble marker looks like and that will come off in water later. Either or, you got your design transferred, and uh, we can get started stitching on this dude now. Uh, so, all right, I'm gonna put it in the embroidery hoop. It just fits this guy in here. I think this is probably our, our widest um, embroidery for this whole alphabet. So all the other ones will be a little bit more compact in the in the uh, hoop there. So an embroidery hoop, uh, ours have this closure on top. They'll, o they'll always pretty much have some sort of closure. So I am uh, undoing that, I'm just loosening that, and that will separate uh, your piece into two hoops. So you got an inner hoop and an outer hoop. I'm gonna take the inner hoop and put it underneath my fabric and I'm gonna kind of try and center it. You can see it kind of resting on, on the hoop. I'm gonna try and get it in the center. If it's not perfect, that's fine because we can always move it later. And then I'm gonna make sure that this guy is really unscrewed, the outer hoop, and I'm gonna set it on the top and just kind of press down. Uh, and that's, now we have like the, um, the fabric is in between the inner and the outer hoops here. And then we're just gonna tighten this up. Tighten up this feller. And once it's tight enough where it feels like the hoops aren't gonna come apart, then I like to start um, basically tightening the fabric in here. It doesn't have to, like you don't wanna stretch it really, uh, but it will, um, you want it still like taut. 
Um, so not stretching, but in there pretty good. If you're stretching a little, that's, that's fine. Um, we want the weave to still feel like it's um, up and down though. So like if I really start pulling on it in one direction, we'll start like distorting like the letters and stuff. Like there, now it's, the letters got a little curvy. We don't, we don't want that idea. So I'm just gonna try and oh, loosened it too much. I'm gonna just try and get it in the center here. Take a little bit of time. And as I go, I'll, I'll tighten it a little bit more. Oh, can I see the marker one more time? Yes. Uh, oops, that's not that's my pencil. Um, I think I might have missed uh, something someone else is saying too. Let's back it up a little bit. Um, so it's the fine line uh, mark be gone. So if you just oh, Karen, uh, Karen, this is embroidery. So we're gonna do hand embroidery. Yep, so, and this is, this is like a fine one. It comes in like fine and thick, either, either are gonna work. So uh, we do have these, a few of them left. I think maybe, I don't know, four or five of these left in the shop. Um, they've been hard to get for me lately. Our distributors, we order like a ton of them and then they send like six. <laughs> so that's been a little tough for us to get, but we do have a few more. Uh, they're great, I've, you know, I've, it's not dried out for me. This has lasted a really long time. Um, all right, I think we're, we're good in here. But yeah, so if you just Google uh, water-soluble marker, uh, a whole pile will come up. This is um, specifically the fine line mark be gone. Um, it says water-soluble ink on the other side. Let's see, I might have another brand here. Um, here's another one, a water erasable marker. This one is from Clover. Hold on, you guys. Oof. There we go. Okay, so that's another another brand. Same difference. Works just as well. All right, so let's take a look at some of the colors that this guy uses. So here's my little color guide. Again, I don't, um, in my newer patterns, I do, I do like give you some suggest like I label the colors a little bit more so you know which which green. Oh, hold hold both the screenshot. I can sure do that. So let's let's get both their names. So uh, here I'll go this way. So if you guys wanted to screenshot, um, if you're watching on a phone or something or on your computer, I suppose uh, I'll hold them for like three more seconds here. Uh, these are the two two different brands that I got going on here. I like them both. I think I just use this one more often because it's prettier, <laughs> the outside. Uh, other than that, they're, they're exactly the same. Question, is the yarn supposed to go into all four corners of the square on the medium material? Is the yarn, I'm sorry, sorry, Karen. Is the yarn supposed to go into all four corners of the square? Oh, um, like, am I going to stitch in these corners? I'm, I'm only going to stitch on on the lines here. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> understanding quite quite right. Um, here, I'm gonna just dump all of the colors out here. And I'll just have this nearby me um, as, we, as we stitch this whole alphabet here. So these are our colors um, that I'm gonna be working from. You know, there's zillions more um, colors available in the world, so feel free to use whatever colors you like. Oh, is the yarn, sorry, uh, is the yarn gonna go in all corners of the square on the medium material? Mm, I'm not quite sure <laughs> what, you're, what you're asking. The, the, the square inside the pattern, I'm not sure what you mean by the square inside the pattern. Oh, um, so this is not cross stitch. Um, are you thinking like cross stitch where, where, um, there's a bunch of little squares and you fill it in? Um, it's, it's not exactly the same like that. So this is more, I kind of think of it more like coloring. So we're actually going to just draw on the lines. Basically, um, we are not going to be filling it in with color. So, um, I'll show you the cover again. It's going to look like, it's going to look like this when we're done. So we'll be outlining 
Uh, we'll be using several stitches, so we'll be outlining uh, the design. This will be filled in, and this is pretty fancy. I will show you uh, how to do that. And you know, here his little wings are filled in, his little teeth are filled in. So we will be doing some filling in stitches, but it's it's not um, like cross stitch where it's a grid and we're filling in a grid. It, it's not like that. Um, so you'll notice this fabric is a little bit different too. It does not have all the X's, like you, or you can't see the little squares in it. It's just like a, a normal um, flat uh, piece of fab fabric. So it's not specialty fabric in, in any sense. Oh, Amy's working on the Splendid Sampler one. Oh, good. I'm so happy you like the videos for those. Any suggestions with working with, ooh, variegated fret thread. Um, uh, variegated thread would be really fun to stitch with. Um, I don't, I think it would just be really pretty. I don't have any specific um, suggestions on how to use it other than it'll give you like a variegated look throughout it. I think that's really cute. So for now, I'm going to stick with, um, pretty much the colors that are in here. But later as we go with this whole, uh, this whole um, project, we could play with color more. Like we don't, we don't have to stick to uh, the design um, that we originally did. So I'm gonna just pick out some colors. I think this is kind of that blue down here. And we got some yellow and black in here yet, yet too, so. Like the letter was the blue, alligator's the dark green, and he's got a bunch of green details. We'll do that in the like pale green. We do have another green too. So this, um, uh, we'll talk about the, the thread here in a little bit. I think I like the lighter. We'll go with that. Um, so this is, this is our embroidery floss. Um, you can get embroidery floss from like Joann's or Hobby Lobby or Michael's or any of those big box stores. They should all have embroidery floss. Uh, this is embroidery floss that we've had manufactured for penguin and fish. And it's, it's the same thing. It is six strand embroidery floss or stranded embroidery floss is another, another name that it's called. So this is from Penguin and Fish. Uh, so that's just in my profile over here now all. Um, otherwise you can just um, get it from like a big box retailer or a small store will have embroidery floss as well, or just search for six strand embroidery floss. And we'll get to what that actually means, the six strand in a sec here. All right, so I think let's start I'm kind of tempted to start with um, the satin stitch, but I don't know. We can really start wherever we like. What I do like to do sometimes is start with the things that are further back. And in this case, I would say that like, it's a little hard to see, but he's got little scales on top or I guess little horn things. What, what would those be called? Those little plates, like plates on his back that look like they're in front of this um, dotted line. So I'm kind of tempted to start there, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll jump around. So maybe let's, let's, uh, let's start. Yeah, I'm going to start. We're going to start with the scary thing first. We are going to start with satin stitch. So that is filling in um, the color a little bit. So I'm going to start with his spines. Spines, that's what they're called. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with spines on the back. And when we run out of floss for that, I think I'll do the back stitch right after. So we're going to learn two stitches uh, tonight, probably the satin stitch and the back stitch. So if you look at our guide here, a satin stitch is where we kind of fill in the shapes and a back stitch will be like a nice little outline. And we will go over both of those in a sec here. So let's take a look at the embroidery floss. I'm going to take these fellers off. So we're just left with the floss. All right, and I'm going to angle you guys a little bit more. Sorry to Facebook and YouTube. I'm moving your camera around a lot tonight, but I think, I think we're finally getting it here. All right, so just to take a look at uh, embroidery floss to start out with, it is made up of six strands. So if I just bump the ends of these, you can see 
that it separates really, really easily. Like it's not tightly twisted. You have all of these little strands that make up embroidery floss and that's on purpose. So you can, uh, um, you can actually divide this up and I'll show you my little, little guide here. Uh, you can divide up how many strands you use and that will give you a different thickness of um, stitch. So for example, here's my floss, little floss thickness guide that I have near me, near me when I stitch. Um, this is what one strand from the six strands looks like versus all six strands down here. So look at the, different, the difference in thickness. So this is all the same stitch. This is all a back stitch, but look how thin this line is compared to how thick this line. And here's the same thing. The floss here is with six strands and thickness guide is with one strand. That is a really different look. So you can play with the look um, just by changing the number of um, floss strands. And that is what embroidery floss is, to de is designed to do. It gives you the option to use however many strands you want to be, however artistic you want to be. Um, I will be using three strands, so that's like half the amount of strands, at least for this design. Uh, and I just like that thickness of line um, for, for these characters. So it's a little fat, it's not too thin, but it's not too thick. Sometimes if you stitch with all six, it's actually a little hard to pull through the fabric. So I like right in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to cut an 18 to 24 inch piece of thread. That's kind of my favorite. I'm just going to estimate it and we're just going to cut it right there. And now here is, so I'm going to, I'm going to use three strands from the six strand. And here's my favorite way to separate uh, floss. So you've probably seen people like grab three from each and like pull, and then it gets all twisted or they have it in their mouth or something like that. I am not going to do it that way. I'm going to actually grab just one strand. So I like hitting the end just to separate them a little. And then this one right here is popping out at me. So I'm going to just grab that one. I'm going to hold it in between my fingers and pull and let all of that thread gather behind me. It looks scary, but when the, I get the one strand out, it all releases and I can run my hand through there and it's all just nice and smooth again. So I'm going to do that two more times. I actually find that, um, floss gets so less tangled doing it this way than if you try and pull it out. Um, like the three on each side and this is much faster and I'm, I'm going kind of slow too just to show so here's here's my third strand pull it zoop, and there we go so now this this is like a set of three that I can use later and it, all these singles I'm going to put back together by just kind of lining them up and just running my hand through them again so there we go. That is our first strand all ready. Oh, oh my gosh, Gretchen, really. Gretchen says that um, I'm going to just say that the inchworm is my very favorite and you've made it at least, you've made at least 15 of them. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I'm going to find it right here. So Gretchen says that she's made at least 15 of the inchworm. <laughs> so that little guy. So we got a few months before we get we get to him. Actually, we'll be like nice in the summer when it gets to that little inchworm. He'll be fun. So that guy's got a lot of satin stitch to fill in the shapes. Okay. So next up. Um, so uh, I am not going to stitch with any knots on here. So usually you tie a knot. And then you um, go to the back and pull the needle through and you have a knot sitting on your back. I am uh, going to stitch without having any knots. I'm going to actually weave in the ends um, so my back is nice and clean, uh, which will be, uh, um, it doesn't need to be clean. I mean, we're putting it in a quilt, but it does end up laying flatter uh, without all the knots in as well. Um, so to start off, um, I'm going to use a technique called the away knot. So I know I just said I'm not using knots, <laughs> but we're going to use a temporary knot called an away knot. So what I'm going to do is just tie the end in a knot. You only have to do this when you don't have any other stitches on, on your 
your embroidery yet. So little knot on that end. Oh, this is making washi uh, missing, making you miss embroidery. It's just so fun. And uh, um, oh, here before I get almost got into it again, got uh, just got going. Uh, but it it is just like a relaxing little craft where you can just chill. And uh, it's like coloring. You just follow the line, <laughs> fill in a few shapes, and then you're, then you're good to go. All right. So to thread the needle, I'm going to just snip the end so it's nice and clean. And uh, my favorite way to thread a needle is the pinch method. So I'm going to get these little strands into my fingers here, and I'm just going to pinch, and then I'm going to unpinch, and you can see my thread there like when I unpinch so I'm gonna just like rock back and forth um, so I'm gonna unpinch and the second I see that thread there um, it's just barely I'm going to take my needle uh, here's my embroidery needle with the the large eye and I'm gonna just lay that on top of my fingers where I unpinch and just kind of push down and you can see I got the little strands through the needle and I'm just gonna grab them, grab the end, and there we go. So that's, that's the pinch method. Um, I find that works super duper well. Again, I'm just kind of squishing the end, pinching it in my fingers, and then the moment I slowly unpinch and the moment I see the floss, I'm just gonna get that needle right on top through my fingers. You can just grab it. Ooh, almost didn't get that guy. Uh, so the, another method is if you have a needle minder, or not a needle minder, a um, needle threader. Uh, these little contraptions have a wire on one side. So you can stick the wire through your needle, which is much e easier to do than thread because it is stiff. Uh, so you can get that through your needle and just let it hang there. And then it has this little kind of diamond shape in there. That's, that's bigger than the eye of a needle. So I can stick the thread through there. My ends are all fuzzy already. There we go. So I've, I've stuck the thread through that larger kind of little diamond shape. And now I can just take the needle and come pull the um, needle threader through and we're threaded that way. All right, so we have our needle on this side, our knots on this side. Oh, Marsha says, I've been trying your pinch method today. Oh, it's getting better. Oh, never knew about it before. Oh, good, I'm, I'm glad it, it's helpful. I mean, you know, sometimes when you, when it's hard to see a needle threader works, works great. Uh, but I do like that pinched method that, that works almost every time for me. Uh, another method people like to use is they fold, they fold their thread over their needle and then pull, and then they have a nice little end. But I find that that doubles up the thread, right? So you're, you're trying to get double the thread through the needle. So I like the pinch method better where you just have just the smaller amount of threads to stick through. All right. So... I'm going to start with a satin stitch. I usually don't start there, but I think with this alligator, it's going to be good um, to start with the satin stitch. Oh, you got the middle green accidentally. Oh, I, I was almost going to actually go with that, uh, Robin. So I think that'd be actually pretty cute. Um, so this does come with, it has three greens in it. I was really tempted to actually use that, <laughs> that middle green instead of this paler green. I bet you that'd look really cute. Um, so you'll have, to, you'll have to share. I'm excited to see what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna actually start stitching his little spines here. Um, so this may be a little difficult to get going, but there are a lot of these in this particular pattern. Um, so I think it's good to just dive right in. Um, okay, so how to start. I mentioned that away knot. Um, so I don't end up that temporary knot called an away knot. So I don't end up with knots on the back. I'm going to start stitching this little spine here. Um, so I'm going to actually put my needle in the fabric about four inches away from the starting point. So I'm going to go like right there. This seems crazy, but it'll make sense in a little bit. 
Oh, um, Catherine, this is the celery color. So the celery green is what I'm using right now. There's the fresh basil is the dark one. Um, then lime peel is in the middle, which I think would be really cute too. And then celery is the, the lighter. Ooh, it almost all looks the same on, on camera here, but it's gradually lighter. So celery, the, the lightest one is what I'm using. Okay, so I've gone from front to back with, um, with that knot here. What this is going to do is reserve um, the thread for me for later. So that'll make sense in a little sec here. So what I'm going to do now is fill in this shape with stitches, this itty bitty shape here. And we can do that in a few ways. We can go horizontally, we can go vertically, we can go at the angle of, um, you know, this way, or we can angle it all this way. Um, it really doesn't matter. So you can play around with it too, if you want. I think I'm gonna go the direction, like an angle here. So what I'm gonna start out doing is I'm gonna go from one side of my shape, gonna come up right at the bottom of my shape there. And I am going to make one stitch all the way across the other side. So I'm going to just follow this line and I'm going to go down right at the top. So this is going to be my first satin stitch here. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to come back to that, but first I want to show you the back. So right here, this is that thread from the knot that we put on um, the front. This is going to just hang out here until we're done using this thread. And then we'll actually weave this in. So this is just on reserve. So we, we can forget about it for now. Um, we will come back to this, this later. So I am going to just focus on this satin stitch here. So that's my first stitch. Um, I do want to... Just trying to get you guys a little bit closer here. Um, I do want to keep that angle while I fill in this shape. So I am going to put a, a um, second stitch in here just to use as a guide. So I'm going to come back to the bottom and I'm going to go like right in the middle. And I'm going to just hold the thread up there and compare uh, the one angle here to this angle, and I want them to be exactly the same, and I'm just going to go up to where my line, line ends there. So um, let's come through. There we go. So those are pretty much at the same angle there. So those are my, my guides. And now I'm going to go back to this first one. And I'm always going to start on the bottom, and I'm always going to end up on the top, which is basically kind of this, this angle here. So I'm starting at the bottom. With a satin stitch, you always want to start on the same side and end on the same side. So I'm coming up again like a tiny, tiny thread, like a thread length away from our first stitch. So I'm basically right up against that first stitch. And I'm going to go across until I hit the top here. And I'm going to go right next to that first stitch again. And there we go. So we got two stitches so close together that it almost looks like one big fat stitch. So let's come down to the bottom again. And we'll go right next to that stitch. And I'm, I'm just trying to fill the space between our first stitch and this one here. And I'm just trying to keep the same angle going. There we go. And I think I can get one more in there. So always, again, starting back at the bottom. Crossing right through the middle there. All right, so we almost have that filled in. I think I can get one more little stitch. For, again, starting from the bottom and then going up to the top, which now is really close. 
and that is good. So there might be like a teeny little point left. We don't have to deal with that because that'll be covered up with our stitches when we do um, our stitches, our outline stitches here, our, our back stitches. So I can just jump on right to this next shape and we're just going to do this like a bunch more times here. So I'm going to again start from the bottom. And I'm going to just keep with whatever angle um, these spikes are at. So I'm going to just go to the top. There we are. Back to the bottom, but right next to that last stitch. You might need not need a little guideline. These shapes are so small that uh, we might not need that extra guideline. However, uh, when we start stitching these letters in, those because um, those are all filled in you don't have to fill them all in but i'll show you how how i fill them in that's using the same stitch we are now this one since it's bigger we will definitely put some guide lines along the way that'll make the stitching way easier because um, what we're trying to do we don't want our stitches to veer like we don't want to be doing stitches and then all of a sudden it goes mm, it starts curving curving and then we got to curve back you know we want our stitches all nice and straight for for the satin stitch so putting some of those guide guidelines in is helpful i think so the reason i'm starting here is because it's way easier to come up on this bottom line without how, having to get out of the way of a bunch of stitches. Because ultimately, we're going to have um, these green stitches go. It's really hard to see the spikes on this, this printout, but the, the green stitches um, will be going all the way along this. The dark green will be going along this line. And if we had those stitches in already, it would be really difficult to come up at the bottom without stabbing through the stitches that already exist and filling in these shapes. So that's why we're doing these little spines first. I think it's just going to be a little bit easier for us. So hopefully this is making sense. I, I, I don't usually jump right in <laughs> to a satin stitch when we're just getting going. But I think in the case of this alligator, it just kind of makes sense. Um, again, so I don't, so I'm not stabbing a bunch of other stitches that already exist. And with a satin stitch, I am kind of going just on the outside of the line, um, just so it covers up the line a little bit. So this is like a slow going little thing, but once we do the back stitches, it's going to speed up real quick. So tonight, I think I can get one more in there. Uh, tonight, I think I'll use up this thread and then we will get out um, some of the dark green and we'll go over how to do a back stitch yet tonight. So a lot of times I like just um, doing the same thing till it's done, but I think in this case, I'll show how to do the back stitch right away too. Just to the other side. This is the slow and steady filling in of the shapes. So one thing I like doing, and you might be able to see this through, but I do like having my left hand uh, or the hand, whatever is holding the, the um, hoop. I do like having that actually involved. So I, actually keep my finger right over where um, the needle is going into and I actually feel that thread as it's coming through and one thing I like doing is kind of pushing the thread out of out of the way so I'm just kind of holding it down here when I feel a stitch has gone through 
and then what that does is it kind of keeps it out of the way as I'm pulling the thread back through and I can feel it and then I can let go right at the end and that allows me to kind of feel if I got a knot or if anything else is um, going on there. My, my backhand is kind of a third eye a little bit. Can feel if something goes wrong. So it's, it's, oh, it's always touching that thread in the back. Oh, Sharon says, this is a great way to relax at the end of a busy day. That is how I feel about it. Um, especially actually with these little satin stitches. I think we're going to go to the next one. Um, it's just, you're just filling in that shape. You don't have to do a lot of thinking. Um, if it's not perfect, that is just fine. Um, for me, this whole project is just about learning and playing and, you know, maybe, maybe on one of these we'll fill in the whole character or we can just, we can just play. So for, for right now, I'm doing this first one, letter A, just kind of straight how the, how the design says to, but we can totally play around with that with the rest of the letters. We'll actually be making t this into a quilt and auctioning it off um, and donating the money to the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery when we're done with this quilt too, so I'm excited for that. I think uh, uh, with the uh, variegated thread that would be really pretty for for these spines if you were using variegated thread for that. Oh, <laughs> Justin says, thanks for the extra squares of fabric and knowing us so well. Uh, I just know like, it, like I get nervous with, you know, the iron on transfers are, are permanent. So, you know, I know that it might be scary to like give it a go the first time with the iron on transfers. So I wanted to make sure I, I got some extra, extra fabrics in there just in case uh, it didn't it didn't go so well. <laughs> and we have extras, of course, too. Um, on the website. But yeah, I thought yeah maybe the first few might take or might be a little silly or just um, you know every once in a while one might not work very well. Or like, you, I mean, like you might wiggle on the iron or something. It might get blurry. Or you do all of them perfect, and then that's good too. So starting on one side each time and going to the other side, even though in theory, if you go to one side and then come back down and you're just doing like tiny stitches in between, Theoretically, you might think, oh, that takes less thread. I should do it that way. But it gives you a really wiggly line, and it um, doesn't, uh, the, the thread of the fabric that's holding that tiny stitch, it's, it might break the stitch because it's only like one little bit holding it. So that's why we're going all the way to the top or starting at the bottom and going all the way to the top and then coming back to the bottom. We're always coming back to our original side. But yeah, Marcia says, because things happen, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you see, I, I am leaving like a little space at the end where I can still see the marking, but I'm, I'm thinking that'll be hard to do a, a stitch that tiny and uh, my other stitches will, when I do the, the back outline, my other stitches will cover that. So I'm, I'm just letting it be. And I can always come back and add a tiny stitch if I want. Oh, <laughs> just as although the part you cautioned us to remove the, before the ironing looked charming. Oh, on a first square, you redid it. Oh no. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> if I end up doing that on accident, I might just leave it in a quilt because I think it's be like, oh, that's like a bummer that I did that. Oh, we're auctioning it off, so maybe I maybe I wouldn't do that. But um, yep. <laughs> 
Yep, yep. I've done that before too, for sure. Oh, JW says it's so cute. Thanks so much. So we're getting there with um, this first thread. We, we definitely won't get all the way to the end here. Um, but we'll get a ways. And then I do want to just get the dark green out just to show how to do a back stitch quick. And I think that's it for, for the stitches in this particular design is just the satin stitch and the back stitch. So if you wanted to get ahead of me, <laughs> you'll have, you'll have both stitches under, under your belt. Um, but I'll be working on this for an hour every day this week. It might take that long. It might take, it might take the five hours of the week. Um, we may get done a little beforehand. I mean, we're kind of cruising so far. Um, we do have, you know, the satin stitches do take longer than the back stitches. And there is quite a bit of satin stitch on this design. Uh, but that's that. I'll just be chilling here. So yeah, if you get it done sooner, fabulous. Oh. Uh, Oh yes, I've done it many times, Marcia. Marcia said she's probably done it before and that's why she cautioned. Yep, I, I have definitely done that. And uh, how I was saying, put a paper towel down. I have gone through my fabric to the ironing board several times as well. Oh, exactly, Kathy. It's handmade. It's not supposed to be perfect. Exactly. It, it does have a charm to it. Um, by having it be hand done, for sure. Oh, JW says, it reminds me of the illustrations in a book I had as a kid. Oh, that's awesome. So this would actually be a really fun, I mean, I'm making it into a, an alphabet quilt, but like, imagine if we did um, like an alphabet book, like this would be so cute if you just put like a, a fabric on the back to hide your stitches and then you could sew it all into like a fabric book of the whole alphabet oh dang i almost want to do that now <laughs> instead but i uh, i am going to do a quilt because we're going to auction off that quilt but how fun to do like a book oh my god i almost want to do like another set to just to do a book now a little fabric book Ugh, that'd be so cute do a little binding. You could do little like fabric end pages. You could put like pockets in it and stuff. Oh, that would be adorable. Oh man, no, I really want to do that. <laughs> Maybe I'll crank out two sets of this. I, I don't, I don't quite know how likely that is, but in my head, I really like that idea. And that's the thing. I mean, I'm going to be doing this into a quilt, but you could do whatever you want with it. I think like, you know, it'd be cute to just spell like a name. Um, like if there's like a, a newborn come in or something um, to write the, the name out and it could be like a cute banner or like a fabric book of just um, like a little kid's name. That'd be really kind of fun. Um, fun too, just their name. Or you could just like, make a small quilt with just um, the name spelled out would be fun. Uh, the, you could also stitch it without the letters too. So if you don't like the letters, but you want to do the animal, just uh, cut away the letters. So like if you still want to use the iron on, just cut out like how you cut off that extra text, like the remove this text text, um, cut off the letters too. And you just um, left or like, you know, cut out this bird and like move them over here. If you want, you can definitely chop up that iron on pattern a little bit more and, and move things around. You could put several birds in because you could use these um, iron ons more than once. So you could just put like six birds up in the sky if you wanted. All right, we'll get one more in 
ja. Um, I think, do we have enough thread? Yeah, I think we have enough thread for one more here. And then we will address our way not from here too. Oh, Rock and Rapper says I might do the uh, a book since I will not be able to afford all the material. That's that's a great idea. Like I I think the book would be really fun. And then yeah, you wouldn't have to get batting and and all that other stuff. Um, Cause yeah, all the material for quilts can definitely add up. Uh, one thing that I've uh, gosh. Now I want to do a million projects because this is another thing that I wanted to, the, to do at one point, but I haven't yet. I'd love to get like one big piece of fabric and then iron on all of the patterns onto just that one fabric and then um, stitch it. And then it would just be like one panel, um, one panel that's stitched. Oh, you're running out of thread. I'm almost out of thread here too, Sharon. So we will go over how I like finishing finishing the thread right when I'm done with, with this little spine that we're working on here. But yeah, I'd love to do that, like a one panel um, stitching of, of all the alphabet. The whole alphabet would be cute too. That'd be a big job though. There'd be a lot of fabric everywhere. It's kind of it's nice it's just stitching on these little pieces of fabric. All right, I think this is going to be my last stitch. All right, so now I'm going to flip it around in the back, but look how cute those are. We got our little spine going and it's so tangible like it's raised a little bit. Um, you might be able to see a little bit from the side, but it is just it feels really nice. All right, so flipping it to the back. So instead of tying a knot, I like weaving in the ends. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go behind the stitches and I'm going to just kind of grab as many stitches as I can. And I'm going to go uh, about half inch to three quarters of an inch if I can. And I'm going to pull it through all those stitches. And I'm actually going to do that two more times. So I'm going to go back the other way and I'm going to try and grab other stitches. Like I'm not going to go in the same path. I'm just going to try and go in and out, try and grab some more stitches. And I'm going to do that one more time. So kind of what we're doing is basically making a long knot. Um, what this allows us to do is have a nice flat back without any, you know, it, it gets rid of this. Like we have the knot with the little fuzzy end. I hate having those on the back because they always pull to the front and they're just really annoying. So this eliminates that idea as well. So there's nothing going to be able to be able to get caught on the back as we're stitching. So all right, so I've, I've woven in that end and now I can snip it um, after doing it three times. So one, two, three, and I can snip it like really close to that last stitch. So up close, this is what it looks like. It's just um, woven in the back. You can't really even see the end. There's no knots and it just looks super duper clean. The no knots for me really is because I hate when my thread catches on knots. Like we still have this away knot on front. So like imagine if it's on the back and we're stitching and one of our threads gets stuck on it. And then we have like this huge loop on the back that we didn't notice till we had like 80 more stitches and you turn the back over and you're like, ah, oh, I'm stuck on that knot. I, I hate that. And that's why I like stitching without knots because nothing's gonna stut, nothing's gonna catch on, on where we wove that in. So now let's address this away knot. We are now gonna just, I'm gonna pull up on it a little bit and I'm gonna snip it off. So we're basically deleting our knot that we started with at the beginning. So if that's garbage. And what that did is it now releases that little piece of thread and I can thread that onto my needle. Again, I'm going to do that pinch method. And now I'm going to weave in this end as well. So same thing, going back and forth three times. And that will secure the front thread. So I, I only have to do it this one time. Um, all the next times I have these stitches that I can weave in the back of. So I, now I have some stitches here 
um, that's what I can what I can use. Oh, and it's 9:35 already. I think we might actually just end here, and we'll we'll do that back stitch tomorrow. So let's let's just take a look at where we're at because we got the whole week to work on work on this guy. The fun thing with satin stitch is that it's all filled in on the back too, which is pretty. So we got that far tonight. I think it's looking pretty cute already. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think actually tomorrow, I think maybe let's just finish up these uh the rest of this spine i do have that other half of the green here so we'll finish that up and then then we can start doing the back stitch across this whole entire area i think that will be really nice so we'll finish this up first then it will, it'll be all about the back stitch um yeah and we'll we'll get like quite a bit of this done tomorrow i'm thinking so all right you guys that is our first little uh for foray into this abc um abc quilt abc stitch along here i'm excited to do work on this uh throughout the year this year so again we'll be doing this uh two letters a month so the first week the first full week of the month will be letter number one we're going to go in order so in this case it's the letter a and the second week of the month will be the next letter so we'll do a and b this month and then we'll work on the embroidery of the month um which ends tonight you guys <laughs> just while we're here yet so tonight is the last night for the embroidery of the month so we will still actually be keeping the pattern it's the penguins pattern we'll still be keeping that in stock now it won't go away like how it used to but um the freebie with it this month is the that needle minder i think we only have like 11 of them left so um that will no longer be a freebie with the um the kit after after 10 o'clock tonight actually so we got about <laughs> 20 minutes left on that and then i'll be switching it over to the new embroidery of the month um and I, I'm so excited for the next embroidery of the month, you guys. It's, <laughs> I think it might actually be my favorite one so far. So that will be revealed at around 10. It takes me about 20 minutes to uh, rejigger the website. So about 10, 15 or so, the new, uh, the new kit will go up. If you're subscribed, you will automatically um, be charged for it at midnight. So if you if you're there at 10 and you've subscribed, don't worry about it. It will go through um, for you for sure. And we'll have a new freebie. If there are any more of the uh, of the little needle minders left after tonight, I will put them in the shop um, in February as well. So those will be its own thing um, for what we have left. I do want to make more, but I think we'll probably do them different colors and stuff. So it'll be like a little series. Um, so anyway, so that'll be, uh, that'll be fresh tomorrow. This is the last day of January, you guys. That's just, how did that happen? We're in 2022, well into the year already, already. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Oh, so the needle miner is not showing up in the shop right now because it is not, um, being sold individually right now until, um, until tomorrow. Um, sometime tomorrow. So, uh, will uh, most likely send an email out when when it is available right now it's still only available as the um, with the kit um, but we will put it up uh, um, after tomorrow oh yeah it's already that's right it's already february for you in the future all you future people there <laughs> okay you guys um, thank you again uh, i'm gonna get start getting set up to switch over the website to the new embroidery of the month and tomorrow we will be working on uh, this little Mr. Alligator here some more. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much again. Uh, I'm going to have fun um, stitching this alphabet with you guys. So see you tomorrow. Have a great evening.